Hello there, Alex from Senate Finance here. And today we are going to see an example of how to analyze your token economy through modeling in order to get a robust token. What you're seeing in the screen is a simulation demo for a white label GameFi project. The dashboard is available at the link in the comments. And it shows all the results for a token economy simulation with all the relevant metrics along the simulation time. As you can see here, the tokenomics initially do not look quite promising, since the token price is going down up to 75% from the initial price. Today, we will see how to transform this price evolution into this one by changing different parameters and tuning uh, parts of our economy. Before getting into that, let me introduce you to the dashboard briefly and how to get insights to, of your token economy design with the Senit dashboard. What you're seeing here on the right part are the, all the results of our simulations. So this is a scenario of your token economy with certain parameters and what you're seeing here it is the evolution of that scenario in particular. You have the metrics from the protocol growth. This is a GameFi project so as a result one of your KPIs uh, as a business plan is the daily active users, the player distribution, the vesting schedule, allocation, the market pressure. This is calculated with two things. First, the, the selling pressure coming from the, from the vesting schedule and the second one, it is the buying pressure generated by your, first of all, business hypothesis and secondly, your token utility and your token mechanics. Then we have metrics such as the token supply and distribution, token dynamics, how many tokens I'm burning, the inflation rate, the revenue from the treasury, also if the treasury is selling tokens in order to, to get, uh, well, to pay the bills, uh, what's the slippage uh, for, for selling those tokens and different metrics for players, uh, such as workers, which here in this game, they are play to earn gamers and, and so on. Here on the left, we have what we call the parameters of the simulation. We divide them mainly into design parameters. Those are the parameters that you can control. So for example, the fees that I'm charging for each of the, of the users, if somebody wants to withdraw some, some tokens, how much am I charging them? And behavioral hypotheses, which are those hypotheses that we cannot control. And it's how the users are going to behave. So for example, how much each uh, fan seeker, so players who come for, for fun to my game, are gonna be spending daily? Or what's the minimum attractive revenue for, for um, workers or play to earn? gamers. Once you have selected a specific scenario here, you can do it with the sliders just moving all along or you can also introduce if you want to with the text box the, the, proper, the proper number. You are able to, to create a new scenario and all the simulation is run instantly. You can also check here on the best in schedule, the, to the total supply and the total, the, the token initial price of the simulation and rearrange all the best in schedule, the allocation and the cliffs for, for this specific simulation if you want to. So, how do we change the parameters in order to go from the baseline, which was not optimal in terms for our token economy to to the one that we actually want. I, I want to say, first of all, that here, what it is written as token price, it is not expected to be the one that we are going to see in the market. There are two things that drives the token price at the end of the day. First of all, it is the tokenomics, all the buying pressure generated by your utility. And secondly, all the speculative movements within the market. This second one, we are not trying to predict. We are just focusing on seeing the mechanics for your project and if by itself generates enough token pressure, token buying pressure and, and has a robust um, economy, 
and and we're not in trying to predict how the markets are going to behave in the, in the mid term so when you're seeing here a token price what we are doing in our simulation it is transforming all this buying pressure and selling pressure that we were seeing before into price movements the first thing you want to do when you see this token price decay as the one that you are seeing here it is to check what is generating all the selling pressure so going to the buying pressure dashboard or graph Better say it, we see that the holders in our token economy are driving all or mostly every selling pressure that affects uh, at the beginning to, to the token price. So we want to check what's the best in the schedule and how this one it is actually affecting our token economy. What we are seeing here, it is a best in the schedule that well, actually, it's kind of short, right? If you look at the best in months, the maximum amount of, uh, of, of, of months until all the best in has been unlocked is 24 months, which is really short. When this happens, actually, um, the first thing that you notice is, it is that the project is not looking for long term value creation, but kind of a rush approach to, to, to get rich. And this is not extremely good because it creates kind of a weird situation between all the agents where all of them are willing to dump the token as soon as they are the first one doing so and getting as much uh, return of investment as they possibly can. So as a result, what you're going to see it is they are going to start selling a lot of tokens before your project has enough traction and enough users to compensate all the selling pressure with the buying pressure generated by the token utility. So if you want to change all these parameters, you just need to right here, type the number that you want to and do it with everybody else. Also, you can um, delete uh, an agent if you click on the, le on the left and, and, and delete it and uh, you're able to rearrange that. I'm gonna do that and I will show you the end result afterwards. So we're back. I've rearranged all the best in months. Uh, now the economy looks way more healthy and sustainable in the long term since at least all the agents involved in, uh, in, this, in this economy has at least three to four years of vesting time. So all the community is going to be way more aligned. And let's see how this has affected the token price. Before we had a minimum uh, price of 0 0.014 and now it is 0 0.021. Obviously it is not perfect since uh, it has a still a, a big decay from the, from the initial price, but it had uh, a big deal, right? Um, so if we look at the buying pressure, we see that the holders are still having a, a big um, impact on the on the token economy but now if you compare it uh, with the workers they they are also giving you some 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 selling pressure notable in comparison to to the to the investors or, or the holders right um, just to clarify if I hadn't done it before holders are everybody here uh, that receive some token. So what we are going to do next, it is try to punish now all the workers that are dumping the token constantly in our economy. And we have three different ways of doing so, or the three that has more impact. We go to the gameplay, gameplay parameters. We see that we are constantly giving some player rewards um, to, to those users that are uh, completely missions in our game. Um, so we could definitely reduce the amount of tokens that are being given as a reward or uh, in this particular game if you wanted to withdraw some some tokens and, and sell it in the market you had to to have this premium um, set right so we could also increase the amount of dollars that are needed for for upgrade to premium these two measures however, also affect a lot on our players. 
And what I mean with that is there are going to be some fan seekers that come to our play and they just want to upgrade to premium because there are new missions, new areas that can, they can explore uh, with, this, with this premium mode or with the rewards that are being given from the token in our token economy, they are able to purchase new equipment and make the game more fun. So in order, if we are limiting um, the amount of, of rewards that we are giving per day or increasing the premium cost, we're affecting at the same time to workers and fan seekers. Another option it is to increase the withdrawal fees. And why is this an, a better option? Well, most of the fan seekers that enters our token economy, they are going to be spending all their tokens in order to improve their experience. They are not going to be constantly taking away tokens from our economy in order to sell them to the markets because that's not their main driver. However, this is for the token for the for the worker, sorry. So what we can do it is increase the average withdrawal fee, which it was set to 15% initially, and we will be setting it to 45, for example. And there are two things that we are going to achieve with this part. First of all, the token price is going to be up because as we are seeing the, the, the same pressure coming from the workers, it is going to be lower than, than the previous one. And at the same time, how this tokenomics in a specific are being uh, constructed, 25% uh, of all the withdrawal fees that we are seeing here are used for burning tokens. Uh, another 25% are used for player rewards and 50% are, are being sent to the treasury. So when 25% of the tokens are being burned, they are also generating extra value to, to the stakeholders and all the community that is displaying this token economy. So we are not only punishing the workers and creating a better aligned community um, for, for those fan seekers who want to come for, for the experience, but at the same time, we're giving them extra value. If we look at the price, we can see how all, all of this is still not enough to, to push the token price to go higher than, than the initial one. And this is because for the initial price that this token economy wanted to, to launch the token ad, we don't have enough traction. We still need to increase the business hypothesis and wait until our game has reached a higher level of players to release the token you know, in a way that actually um, it is good and robust for, for all the community or, and for all the investors. So actually doing the numbers, what we need to do it is to wait until the, talk, the, the game has five times the amount of players that it has right now or that it expects to have for the for the token launch and also um, we should be pushing for more players at saturation time otherwise it's not going to be enough to have a, um, a fair token price for for the investors for all the community that is joining us at the very beginning of the project and it, we are going to see the token price dumping at the very beginning unless there are a lot of speculation. With this amount of players, we are gonna see an economy that has enough recurrent revenue to create or generate buying pressure in order to push the price up and balance the, the, the selling pressure coming from the vesting and from other agents. So that's it for now. If you have any doubts on how to tweak your token economy to model it in order to make sure that it is robust, please write all in the comments all your questions or you can also contact us at Zenith Finance and we will be extremely happy to help you in order to create a robust token economy. Thanks.